In the realm of bad endings, there's a lot of different kinds to cover off on. There's the ones you earn yourself by making a bunch of bad choices. There's the ones that are just basically lackluster and the ones that follow amazing games. Here we're talking about the endings that were worse than disappointing. These endings were actively so horrible and frustrating that we're still thinking about them. We're still mad, and we hope to never see anything like them ever again. Whether because of a horrible narrative direction or a conclusion so awful it ruins the entire game that came before, these ones seriously sucked. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 video game endings that pissed everyone off. Number 10. Your choices don't matter at all. The Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. Now, supermassive games have proved over the years that they can do some really cool things with the horror video game format. Until Dawn was a masterpiece and their latest offering, The Quarry, was more teenage spooky shenanigans to chew on for fans. In the middle of those was the Dark Pictures anthology, which is pretty hit and miss. You spend the whole story trying to unravel a mystery that begins with a little girl burning down her family home and spans decades. And of course, this is a supermassive horror game where you'll be making a good handful of life and death decisions within that story. Except that when it all comes to a head, you find out the person you thought you were playing as never existed. The survivors of your story fade away, and it turns out the whole thing was all a hallucination from a traumatized old man who lost his family in a fire. Yes, a hallucination. A lot like a dream, that thing you're really not supposed to do at the ending of anything. Turns out you were the bus driver from the start of the game who passed through this town that held a lot of horrible memories for him. So he hallucinated his little sister and crashed. Intricate story of protagonists being apparently reborn and all of your difficult choices be damned because nothing matters. It was all a dream. Nobody liked this one, and it did probably the worst thing a video game ending can do. It ruined the game that came before it. Number 9. Your choices don't matter. Again. Telltale's Game of Thrones. There really is nothing like a choice-heavy game dropping the ball and making you feel like absolutely nothing that you decided on in the entire game mattered, but Telltale's Game of Thrones drops the ball in a completely different way than Little Hope did. While Telltale have done some extraordinary games, you have to hand it to people who were committed to diving into their Game of Thrones offering. It kicked off in 2014 as one of their much later series, where you were either tired of the format or absolutely on board. A pity then for the latter who were excited for the collision between the Telltale experience and one of the biggest shows ever, as the ending left a lot to be desired. As you'd expect, the world of Game of Thrones is brutal and people die, but the main player complaints here were that the deaths felt cheap and avoidable. Nobody wins and everyone loses, which might be all well and good on TV, but in a game where you've spent six episodes trying to make good choices, finding out there's no good ending pissed a lot of people off. Killing off just about the entire family you've been playing as throughout the game and leaving the rest with unknowable fates left an incredibly bad taste in the mouths of players who made it all the way to the end. As did the fact that the final episode seems far more interested in setting up a season two than it does rounding out the story it's just been telling for six episodes. That's a season two that actually never came to pass, mind you. Number eight, the non-ending, Rage. Rage is such an oddity. It's a solid shooter with good combat mechanics, fun crafting elements, interesting enemies, and a cool aesthetic, but its title really does encapsulate the reaction to its ending. Well, that and amusement. That's because Rage doesn't really have an ending. It's so clearly unfinished. Players went in expecting a massive battle between the Resistance and the Authority in their ultimate Capital Prime assault, but the end didn't even feature a mini boss, let alone a final boss. No big face off, you just override the Authority's control over the Arcs, which will wake up an army ready to drive back the bad guys, but then that just doesn't happen. It feels like where the final act should have started, but there was no final act to speak of. The final cutscene feels very, just trust us, you did it, yay you, and then end credits. Very anticlimactic. Number seven, this story is happy end, ghosts and goblins. You've almost definitely encountered ghosts and goblins either in your own nightmares or on a list of ours about infamously tough games. For the uninitiated, this 1985 run and gun platformer hurt many a child and subsequently their extended families via its gauntlet of especially difficult levels. While there was already more than enough pain to be found in the main game, things somehow got even worse with its original fake out ending that required you to play through the whole game again and the even shittier one after that. 
That's right, after battling your way through a sea of monsters, you finally face off against the final boss, Satan, in your attempt to rescue Princess Prinprin. The big reveal is this is actually only the halfway point of the game, and everything that happened was all just a dream, meaning you need to play through every level again, except they're even harder. Of course, that isn't the real ending, but it sets you up with enough frustration to get pissed off by the real ending, which rewards you with the following phrase. Congratulations! This story is happy end. Being the wise and courageous knight that you are, you feel strong swelling in your body. And that's it! Look, I can forgive the localization typos here, but that is so much effort to go through twice to just get a pop-up saying, well done, you did it, it's over. Number six, any ending but the almost unachievable good ending, Batman Dark Tomorrow. This 2003 action adventure was panned for its controls, missions, wild camera, honestly just every little thing. It'd be faster to tell you about the things that didn't suck. But instead of doing that, let's talk about the awful ending everyone hated, for those who made it to the ending at least. The issue here is that there's no way of knowing what you're supposed to do to get the good ending. As in, the game doesn't tell you or even hint at the essential objective. Unless you're using a guide, you'd be hard pressed to interpret that you're supposed to disarm a particular signal before taking on Reza al Ghul. In the high likelihood you get a bad ending, you can either get Batman killed or end up getting the city flooded. Or in an excellent turn of events, both of those things can happen. Great. Number five, the ultimate cliffhanger, Crisis. Crisis is a fantastic game with a hell of an ending, so long as you played it sometime after 2011 when the sequel was already out, and you didn't have to wait four whole years for the original's cliffhanger ending to resolve itself. Not only is the ending extraordinarily abrupt, you'll run up against it after spending just 10 hours in the futuristic FPS. In short, we can call Crisis's ending Halo 2-esque. The setup for the finale has our gang facing off against a Ceph warship. Nomad destroys the Ceph warship, Psycho flies in to save Helena and Nomad, and the latter insists they need to keep fighting, as there are still Ceph on the island. Then you get a transmission from Prophet, who's battling inside the energy field on the island. You'll be absolutely amped to do a bunch more alien fighting at this point, your tack cannon at the ready, but just like that, it's all over. You're left to watch the credits roll with a laundry list of unfinished business and unanswered questions. It is a testament to how great this game was that the main reason this ending pissed off players is they just wanted to play more of it. Number four, die horribly and wake up, Monster Party. It was all a dream will never not to be a cliche, even when it's technically, it was all a nightmare, which is what applies to the 1989 Bandai action platformer, Monster Party. To say this game is a little weird would be a huge understatement. You play Mark, a child who gets drafted into conflict by an armored eagle monster named Bert to battle other monsters, evil monsters. You go through the game fighting all manner of beasties from a toothy Venus flytrap to skeletons, giant spiders, fish heads on legs, and what I can only describe as a bouncing tempera prawn. Okay, so some of the monsters are less scary than others. After this entire ordeal, which isn't a breeze mind you, your old pal Bert gives you a present from which a beautiful princess arises. Sweet, so far so good. Except then she immediately turns into a horrible monster and summons more horrible monsters. Mark gets freaked out, is eaten alive, and then wakes up because it was all a dream. Now I'm not entirely sure this ending isn't actually so horrific that it's actually good, so let me think about it and get back to you. Number three, that's all folks, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Sometimes an ending stings far worse than it otherwise would because the game preceding it was exponentially better. This is exactly what happened with Monolith's 2014 action adventure, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. After a stunning journey that delivered with innovative mechanics, excellent combat, and a wonderful use of the original lore, the game ends on a very abrupt low note. If you thought it was all a dream was the worst thing that could happen on this list, let me introduce you to sudden quick time events. Because who doesn't love quick time events? Oh right, almost everyone. You begin your face off against the final boss, shit scared about what's to come, given this is the game that birthed the Nemesis system, which made enemy AI substantially more intelligent. After a couple of cutscenes, you execute three button presses correctly and then vanquish the guy who's been making your life a living hell. The major complaint here is that the ending felt massively rushed and unsatisfying, particularly compared to the rest of the game. Number two. Way harsh, narrator. Fallout 3. 
You don't need me to tell you that Fallout games aren't short or easy. They require a certain amount of finesse, the ability to talk the talk, RPG know-how, and combat efficiency. So imagine how players felt when after pouring dozens of hours into this one, they discovered there's no way to avoid a nuclear explosion. That's right, after searching for your missing father all game, you're given three choices at the end, but they all go down the same explodey non survivy route. I certainly hope you were done side questing too, because you will not be able to continue visiting anybody after the whole nuclear explosion thing. The Broken Steel DLC addressed this particular issue, but it has to be said that even if you send in your super mutant companion to disarm the bomb, which makes a ton of sense because he's immune to radiation, the game basically mocks you like you're a coward for not doing it yourself. He calls your bud the true hero and essentially says you let down your legacy by not dying to extreme radiation. War might not change, but this ending should. Number one, you won. Kind of, not really. Superman 64. Hitting you with another surprise here in our top slot that sometimes things just aren't as nuanced as a terrible ending coming out of a great game or a terrible game having a great ending. Sometimes it's just as simple as a terrible game ending on a terrible note. It's well known that 1999 N64 action adventure Superman 64 isn't just bad, it's practically infamous for how shitty it is. But we're not here to pile on to the poor reviews, we're mostly concerned with the ending, which is shocking. You'd think a superhero ending wouldn't be tricky to pull off. Good guys win, bad guys lose, right? Apparently even that was a bridge too far for these game writers who decided Superman 64 would round out with a quick well done for saving your buds, but then an addendum that, and I quote, in the real world, Lex is still there. Then the credits roll. So basically it's like, you won, but you achieved nothing and you just wasted your time playing a bad game that had a bad ending. Boo. That's the end of our list, but do let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other video game endings that you reckon pissed everybody off. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, and come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.